This is the third step in the four-part step that will result in the chair being legged up. And if you remember, legging up is completing the chair from the, the seat down. In this process, we're going to make the H. The format of stretcher used in this chair is called an H stretcher. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be making the H. Now, when we're done, there won't be a lot to show for our work, but we will have done a lot of work that's going to just allow this chair to fall together. Notice that there are two stretchers that are very plain, and then this one that has fancy details. This is the center stretcher. Now here's a good tip to prevent you from confusing the center stretcher, because remember, the biggest, the, the cause of mistakes is generally confusion, not inability. And so what I'm gonna do is take a piece of blue painter's tape and put it around the center of the center stretcher. The blue tape does two things. It codes this piece, it identifies this piece as the center stretcher, so at a glance I can see it. The other thing it tells me is no holes are drilled into this piece. Now, before we begin, notice the chair is rocking. Do not worry about that at this point. It will be taken care of at the end of the fourth step. It's one of the last things we do, so don't worry about this. If everything else has uh, been tested and worked out for you, this is not a problem. Now, here's the problem that we need to talk about. We determined last episode that round hole, round tenon, is a bad joint uh, to, to rely on as a glue joint. The glue fails because of so much of the inside of the hole is end grain. So if we want to use socket construction here, we face a problem, and that is we, the, the joints will fail if we try to use the stretchers to hold the legs together. Because by using the stretchers to hold the legs together, we're putting this joint in tension. And when the glue fails, the joint's going to pull apart. So this is not a joint we can put in tension. However, this is a perfectly good joint to turn around and instead use to push the legs apart. When we push the legs in part, then the joint is in compression and it cannot come apart because it's pushing legs away. Now the way we do that is by adding a little bit of extra length to the stretchers. So we have to figure out the lengths, uh, which we've already done. We know that this distance here is uh, uh, 12 and 3 quarters. And so we're going to add in a little bit of extra length so that these stretchers are pushing the legs apart and the joints are in compression. And that little bit, extra bit that we add in uh, is no more than a quarter of an inch. We're gonna call this the preload. So what we're gonna do is add in a quarter inch of preload on both sides and on the center stretcher, and that will effectively put all our joints in compression so they cannot fail. Now, remember when we were measuring between the legs, I told you that your tolerance was one eighth of an inch. You could be, you had to be the same, you could be off by no more than an eighth. If that occurred, when you choose the numbers that I'm going to be running through the formula, use the smaller of the, smaller of the two numbers. So if this was 12 and 5 eighths, this is 12 and 3 quarters, you're going to use the 12 and 5 eighths side. Why? Because this idea of putting joints in compression is, is very effective. But what it is doing is it's turning the legs into levers. And if you put too much force in there, you can snap your seat. So we don't want to do that. We'll settle for the smaller of the two uh, as, the, as the number that we're going to plug into the formula. We're going to build into our stretcher one quarter inch extra length so that we put the joints in compression. We call that quarter inch preload. We're going to 
calculate our stretcher lengths using this formula. Now it's not a complicated formula, but it requires a little explanation. We're looking for something that's unique to chair making. You, this is different from your other experiences in woodworking. We're looking for a dimension that we identify as shoulder to shoulder. Let me show you shoulder to shoulder. These are the points we're locating. This is shoulder to shoulder. Now notice something critical about the shoulder to shoulder length. It does not include tenons. Those must be added in next. So that's shoulder to shoulder. Remember when I wrote on the seat, I wrote my number from this chair. I wrote x equals 12 and 3 quarters. The reason we call this x is because it varies. If you make lots of chairs, you, you'll get different numbers all within a very small range. Remember, no, greater, no less than 12, no greater than 13, but any number in between works very well. And there's enough variation that we call it x because it changes. 2 eighths is the quarter inch of preload. I'm expressing it as eighths because as I get into fractions, I don't want to be converting fractions during the math. Now, we can plug in. My x is 12 and 3 quarters. I'm going to convert it to 6 eighths. To that, I'm going to add my 2 eighths of preload. And I'm going to get a shoulder to shoulder length of 13 inches. Now, tip. Remember that most of the problems you're going to encounter or that are going to, or mistakes that you're going to make, are not the result of inability, but of confusion. I can't emphasize this one enough. Do not do this math in your head. As easy as it seems, you'll make mistakes, and you won't know about it until a point where you won't be able to, to uh, compensate for it. I've taught thousands of people to make chairs, and there were certain problems that would pop up over and over. And one of them is people cutting their, ten, their, their stretches to the wrong length. And when I ask them how they, they made the mistake, they always say, I did the math in my head. Don't. Write it out. If you make a mistake, uh, you can go back and you can figure out where you made the mistake. And there's something about writing out the process that even in the most simple of situations, that allows you to see a mistake if you make it. So get into the habit of doing the math. Never do the math in your head. Anyway, so I have 13 inches is going to be my shoulder to shoulder length. So somewhere on here is my 13 inches. Where? This whole thing is about 20 inches long. Well, there's a scribe mark right here in the middle. I can use that and measure out and find my 13 inches that way. Um, the problem is that requires me to do even a little bit more math. I have to divide this number by 2. That's going to come out to 6 and 4 eighths inches. If I set, if I measure from here, to here, 6 and 4 eighths inches, I should come out with an S2S of 13 inches. Okay, we're going to lay out our stretchers, finding our shoulder to shoulder uh, locations on the stretchers. I'm using a very simple block that I can put in my vise that will keep the parts from tipping while I work on them. I'm going to set a pair of dividers to six and a half inches, which was the numbers that I worked out when I ran the formula. 
Now, I'm doing something different here. Notice that I'm not measuring from the end of the tape to six and a half. I'm starting at six and a half and extending the divider to 13. And what that does is just allow me to test my division. Very simple thing, but remember what I said. The process of legging up, of laying out your stretches, is a minefield, just full of opportunities to get confused and take mistakes. So we've built into this process all these little tests that in, by themselves may seem silly, but they keep you from making mistakes. And so it's worth doing it the way I've shown you. Now, I have to mark this shoulder. When I do it, I'm going to use one of these pens. Notice two different colors. If you're out driving in your car, red tells you stop, danger, warning, do not proceed. Green, when the light turns green, it says to you, it is safe to proceed. The problem here is cutting off a tenon. When you get to the point where you start actually cutting wood, the problem is very real of cutting off a tenon. And that too will be the result of confusion. So when we make our marks, our marks are going to be color coded. The shoulders, where I do not want to cut, because I'll cut off a tenon if I do, I'm going to mark in red because that tells me danger, warning, stop, do not proceed. Where I do want to cut the end of the tenons, I'm going to mark in green because that tells me it's safe to proceed. So once again, such an important tip. Whatever you do, do not make two marks of the same color. Don't take a pencil or a pen and make two marks of the same color because it opens up the opportunity for you to cut on the wrong mark. Believe me, Teaching some 6,500 people, I can't tell you how many times we've had people cut off tenons. This avoids it. So I'm marking shoulders. I'm marking in red. And there we go. Now, again, the opportunity of making mistakes is so great that I'm not going to trust this. I'm going to check this measurement, this layout, against the chair to confirm that it's going to work. Let's do that now. What I'm going to do is align one red mark right here on the back edge of that leg at the height of the scribe mark and I'm going to place the other one against the leg. When I do, this mark on the back overlaps the leg. Why? That's the quarter inch of preload. I want my stretchers to be interchangeable so I'm going to check it on both sides. That works perfectly. Now when I lay out the second stretcher I'm going to test it as well the same way. Now we're going to add in our tenons. We've got a shoulder to shoulder dimension. We have to add in the tenons. The tenons we're going to make are one and one eighth inch long. Now my shoulder to shoulder length, half of it was six and four eighths. So to that I'm going to add one and one eighth, that'll give me seven and five eighths. If I set my dividers to seven and five eighths, that should lay out inch and an eighth tenons for me. Now we need to lay out the tenons. I know that I need to set my divider to seven and five eighths inches. Now watch the way I do this this time. I do set one end at the beginning of the tape measure and extend the other out to seven and five eighths. 
because I have a different test than uh, the one that I used when laying out the shoulders. We're marking the ends of the tenons in green because green says safe to proceed. And that's where we will want to cut. There are our green marks and our red marks. As long as I don't confuse them and cut on red, I'll be safe. Now this is the test that I want to make. I'm going to physically measure a tenon to make sure I didn't make any mistakes with my math. I did not. Now that I've tested the length of that tenon, I'll repeat on the second stretcher. We've laid out and tested the two side stretchers. Now we need to do the same for the center. The problem is there's nowhere to measure. So we'll take the side stretchers with rubber bands and simply duplicate what I created when I tested the stretchers. Notice this side stretcher is on the outside of the legs. This one is going to go on the inside. And again, at the height of the scribe line, I confirm everything is right, and it is. Observe again that one stretcher is inside and the other one is outside. That puts them the same distance apart that they will be when they are in the legs. It's the same concept as measuring center to center uh, between two studs by measuring inside to outside. I'm going to measure from this point right here on this stretcher, right where I'm going to drill the hole, to the corresponding spot on the other stretcher, right where I'm going to drill the other hole. And when I measure, I come up with precisely 16 inches. So, Using 16, 16 is going to become my x, and I'm going to run the formula again, s2s equals x plus 2 eighths. We're going to repeat the same layout process for the center stretcher as we did for the sides. We just measured on the chair x. In that particular chair, it's 16. That number 2 is a variable, so we treat it as x. When you make your chair, you should have a number that's close to 16, but not necessarily the exact number. So once again, 16 plus 2 eighths is 16 and 2 eighths. Remember what I said. Do your math. Never do it in your head. The expression we used to use in classes is, to remind everybody, was chairmakers can't do math. Again, I have to divide that by 2. When I do, I'll get 8 and 1 eighth. We repeat the process for the center stretcher. I lay out. The dividers at 8 and an eighth, starting at 8 and an eighth, 8 and an eighth, and extending to 16 and 2 eighths. Then I check my math. I did the division right. Now, if it's to find the center of the scribe line, 
I just use my thumbnail in the tape to emphasize it. And I lay out my shoulders. There they are, the red marks. Never cut on red. We still have to add in the tenons. But first, we're going to check this against the chair. I always confirm everything, every step. Once again, I'm going to align one red mark here, and the other one will overlap a quarter of an inch. Great. It works just the way it should. Now that the center stretch has been tested shoulder to shoulder, we'll lay out the tenons. Remember, tenons are one and one eighth inch long. One and one eighth. So I'm going to add two eight and one eighth, one and one eighth. That will give me nine and two eighths. So if I set my dividers to nine and two eighths, that should give me an inch and an eighth tenon. Now we lay out the tenons, and again the process is different. I am not checking my division, so I am measuring from zero, extending my divider out to nine and two eighths. And I'll transfer that to the stretcher. And once again, I trust nothing, I confirm everything, and I do it by measuring that tenon. It's inch and an eighth long, I'm all set. And there we are, our stretcher system, measured, laid out, and tested. Notice I have not cut anything until this point. Everything is confirmed before I do anything irreversible. The only mistake I can make at this point is to cut on red, and red tells me, danger warning, stop, do not proceed. And once again, the safer way to do this is by gripping the waist in the vise. Now, just a couple of things to observe. I cut off all the large cookies first, and then I do the small. And that just is for efficiency. I don't have to move the vise in and out. But notice, too, that I grip the waist. And the reason I do that is for safety. If I were to try and grip it on this end, I would only be able to make contact in the vise here. It would be flopping around, and the chances of the saw jumping and cutting me are more than I want to take. So there we go. There are the cookies. Safety tip. Don't let these fall on the floor. If you step on one, they're very dangerous dispose of correctly. There are two types of tenon makers. The tenons are 5 8 inches in diameter. These are both 5 8 inch tenon makers. There isn't a whole lot of difference between them. Pick up whichever one you can, uh, uh, you can find. This one has two cutters. This one has one cutter. This one I use in a cordless. This one I've adapted so I can use it in a hand brace. Other than that, there's a whole lot of difference. I 
set the cordless on slow speed. As I run the tenon maker, I'm watching here where the cutter is, this red mark. And I'm watching the cutting action getting closer and closer to it because once the depth stop touches the end of the tenon, I want to stop the cutting action. If I don't, I risk cutting a very thin neck on the tenon. We're ready to assemble. Now, the side stretchers are joined to the center stretcher at an angle, and we have to determine that angle. And the source for that is the chair. So I'm going to take, place the two feet on the edge of the bench so the bench becomes a, one leg of an angle. And there is the second leg of the angle established from the chair. I'll take the bevel square and I set it to that angle. Now I confirm this angle over here. And they're almost dead on. But if there were a difference between this side and this side, take an average of the two. Set the bevel square to an average of the two and that'll work out just perfectly. Anyway, there's our angle for drilling these holes. This is done with a 5 8 inch bit. I am verifying that the center line of this stretcher is parallel to the jar of the vise because that's where I'm going to place the bevel square. If the stretcher is cocked in the vise, this is irrelevant. There's my angle. It's a 5 8 inch hole. I have a depth stop set on my, my bit. This is inch and three eighths. The tenon's inch and an eighth. So I'm actually drilling a hole that's slightly deeper than the tenon is long. The reason being that the compression is created by the shoulders, not by the end of the tenon. And I want to have a little bit of depth in the end uh, just to pick up any play. If you don't have a depth stop, you can use a piece of, of colored tape, anything to help you control your depth. Okay, I'm going to start the bit vertical and then change the angle after I've entered the wood. Verify with the bevel square. Remember the problems of confusion. The next method of avoiding confusion is going to make your palms sweat, you're going to hyperventilate, you're going to have angina because this is so different than everything else you do in woodworking. It's going to scare you. We're going to do what we call a wet fit. A wet fit is defined as drill a hole, Swab that hole with glue and assemble it. 
then test it before you drill any more holes. So you never drill two holes or more in a row. You always drill a hole, glue it, assemble it, and test it. And that will save you lots of problems because if you drill all your holes at once, all these parts look alike and it's really easy to confuse them and put a front leg on a back leg, in a back leg location, something like that. And believe me, I've seen it done. So I strongly advise a wet fit. Now we're using white glue, not because of its strength. We're not concerned with the strength. I want the open time because the assembly of the chair will take a while. And there's nothing more perfect than a coffee stirrer for swabbing the glue around in the hole. And now I assemble. Does that work? I don't know, but I'm going to test it against the chair. And the way I'll do that is to put the stretcher exactly the same way it was. Remember back when I was uh, um, uh, checking my center stretcher, I put it in again against the two scribe marks, and when I do, this tenon should be equidistant between those legs. It is, and so that has been tested. It will work in this chair. I don't have to take it apart again. The assembly is done. I'll move on to the next piece. I will drill the hole. I'll swab it with glue and I assemble. But this is the, the, one of the things that I'm trying to avoid. If I made a mistake in drilling this hole and I had drilled the other hole without testing it, I probably would have repeated the mistake. This way I find the mistake in time to make a correction at least in what comes, uh, at least in what follows. Once again, we put glue in the hole. We swab it, and we assemble. If I were using yellow glue, it has a maddening habit of seizing on you. If it were to seize in this position, I'm sunk. White glue gives me the open time I need. Now that's not the setup I want. It's this. And now I will test the stretcher the final time. And I do so by putting against my front legs. It works. I put it against my rear legs and it works. This has been tested to fit this chair. I'm just going to set it on the bench top to make sure that it lies in a plane and it can even dry that way while I set up for the next step. Thank you for watching this content. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And check back frequently for more Windsor chair making tips and tutorials.